Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to let the room fill up for a moment and we will get started shortly. Welcome, welcome. All right. Um, we're a timely bunch here at WPI, so I'm going to go ahead and kick things off as people are still entering. Um, welcome to the music information session here at WPI. I want to congratulate all of our admitted students who are joining us tonight to learn more about another side of WPI. Um, my name's Julie. I work in the admissions office. I'll be here kind of managing things behind the scenes. Um, but before I turn it over to our co-hosts from the music department tonight, I want to encourage any attendees to drop any of their questions in that questions and answers box. Um, I know there will be a short presentation and then we'll save some time um, at the end of the session to answer any questions that any of our admitted students have. So with that, um, Scott and Joshua, I'll let you take it over. Thank you, Julia. Yeah. So hi, all. Uh, congratulations to you. Uh, my name is Scott Barton. I'm a professor of music. I'm also the associate department head for the arts. And hello. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Joshua Rohde. I'm the director of choral activities here at WPI, which means I conduct all of the choirs here on campus. And I also teach a few music courses. Awesome. So we're here to tell you a little bit about uh, music at WPI. And I think, uh, at, you know, at WPI, music's incredibly special because you have students who may be pursuing and likely are pursuing a bunch of different kinds of paths uh, as they, they view their future and their potential careers, which may involve engineering and science to, to varying extents. But um, there are also some incredibly passionate and accomplished musicians. And the cool thing about WPI is that you don't have to choose between the two, uh, that you can truly do both. Um, and so uh, so we are here to ensure that your musical lives continue healthfully, uh, not only only your time here, but in the many years beyond. So, um, and and really, it's a it's a neat program uh, because we do all sorts of things, right? There's performance opportunities. There's uh, we have a number of technology offerings. There's research opportunities. Uh, there are clubs. There's you can study theory and history and, and a bunch of different kinds of fields. Um, so we're going to take you through uh, just some of the basics of how how the um, the HOA requirement, the humanities and arts requirement, works, um, and some of our offerings in music, um, and then um, and then take your questions. Um, so I'm going to take you to the our, our website, which is music.wpi.edu. Uh, uh, and so the first thing you'll is important to understand for music and any of the uh, humanities and arts disciplines is how it works at WPI. So it's essentially um, what every student at WPI, every undergraduate student has to complete their humanities and arts requirement. And what that means is you declare a depth in a particular discipline, such as music. Um, and so you have to take three courses to satisfy that depth component. You take one non-music HUA course, that's your breadth, so it could be philosophy or English, um, and then you take one more course in any HUA discipline. It could be in music, could be in something else. And so at the conclusion of those five courses, you then take a seminar or practicum, and this is a small group setting, 12 students, um, where you, it's really involved in, in group work and group dialogue and, and making projects in some cases for the practicum uh, that really ties these different uh, kinds of uh, those experiences uh, together. And like I said, it's incredibly flexible. You can go in the direction of, of doing something technological, uh, something involving performance or composition. Um, beyond that, it's not too hard to uh, to declare a minor, uh, which is essentially taking two more courses and then there's a capstone, a minor capstone uh, beyond that. Um, and so that you know, music can really be a significant focus, even if you're if your major is elsewhere. Of course, it's also possible to major in uh, humanities and arts with a focus in music too. And so we're all happy to get to help you whatever your your particular journey is. Um, we'll start by talking about the, tell you a little bit more about the ensembles, which many of our students are involved with. Um, Professor Rohde, you want to you wanna take over? Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. And just to comment on the HUA requirement, 
Um, I think that's one of the th great things that sets WPI apart from a lot of institutions is that it's a core part of the curriculum that every student fulfills a humanities and arts requirement. And some people will do this in Spanish, some will do it in history, some will do it in art. Um, many of the students that we work with, of course, do it in music, but um, you don't have to do it in music if you don't want to. So with our ensembles, as you can see, uh, there's just four pictures here at the uh, on the website, but this is just an introduction to sort of the four categories of ensembles that we have at WPI. Choirs, orchestra, jazz ensembles, and the concert band. And they are broken into these four uh, categories, but we have actually considerably more. Um, there's a lot of small ensembles, such as chamber groups, and we have uh, African drumming ensemble, a percussion ensemble, saxophone quartet, and a variety of other things. So, but why we share uh, these four main categories is because the ensembles generally fall in these boxes and have a professor, a faculty member that oversees all the activities within this grouping. So for example, for me, I work with all the choirs here at WPI, which means that we have a few larger ensembles um, for sopranos and altos, for tenors and bass, and then there's a variety of smaller groups that fall underneath that which we have a chamber choir, and we also have five different a cappella groups. So if you're interested in anything that's involving singing here at WPI, you can find my contact information underneath the choirs in the upper left-hand corner there. So the same goes if you're a string player or interested in orchestra. Our orchestra director's con contact information is there. Um, Professor Ku, who I know would be happy to discuss and tell you some more of the details about that. Our concert band, the block directly below, is where you'll find uh, both the concert band and the director, Professor Lutch, but also our percussion ensemble, saxophone quartet, and some of those other woodwind-based groups. And last but certainly not least is our jazz ensemble and all of their other associated groups, which are overseen by Professor Olson. So with these ensembles, uh, you can take the Class, take them both as a class where you pursue credit or you can enroll for zero credit and treat it more as a student club which many of our students will enroll, enroll their freshman year get credit um, which counts towards their HUA requirement it's also a good way to you know add a nice A on the GPA um, I have starting out uh, but then many students will continue on through their senior year and take it not for credit uh, but just enroll because they love singing and playing music. So, Great. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about music research and, and, and technology. So we have um, really quite a significant music technology uh, group of faculty and courses, uh, which shouldn't be too surprising given the focus of WPI as, a, as an institution overall. Um, and so the courses that we offer um, span everything from topics in MIDI and digital sound and interactive programming in the Max environment to working with musical machines uh, to practicums that focus on um, innovating uh, traditional instruments uh, to building new kinds of instruments, co collaborations between music and science, multi-channel sound, right? So a really large array of, of, of different courses. Um, and these courses are also connected to various research groups and labs. So I direct the Music Perception robotics lab where we conduct uh, psychological experiments about music perception and we also build musical robots uh, and design software that allows um, interaction between the two. I have a number of research groups right now uh, who are working on grouping perception and onset detection, these things that we do as human musicians, but um, is uh, actually an incredibly complicated and, and, and uh, a nuanced task for a machine. Uh, Professor Manzo uh, directs the Electric Guitar uh, Innovation Lab um, where all sorts of neat projects both hardware and software that he's engaged in. Um, and you can see some of the other, other groups that we have as well, including the Jazz History Database, uh, which was started by Professor Falco, which is archiving uh, a lot of the rich jazz tradition um, in the New England area and beyond. So um, there's a fluid sort of connection between the research labs and the courses and independent studies. Um, 
Sometimes students will want to do a particular project and we'd set that up on, a, on an individual basis uh, or with a group of students um, that can also lead into coursework and that could lead to music, you know, minors and even individually uh, sponsored uh, courses of study. Uh, we have a number of students who are doing um, particular uh, majors in, in, in music technology. Um, so, so this is a, a major, major um, uh, opportunity for students as well. Um, and uh, in addition, there is uh, clubs and organizations. Uh, uh, Joshua, you want to say a quick word about those as well? Absolutely. So um, all of the ensembles that I talked about earlier function both as a course and as a student club, which means that they have leadership amongst the students. So we have student president, student secretary secretary, student treasurers, and they helped direct the ensemble. They help guide the activities. In addition, there are a few other music ensembles and musical groups and clubs, such as our pet band, um, which is completely student led. And I think with all of these um, student clubs, we have a recording club. Um, there's a WPI campus radio. It's a real opportunity for students to become involved in sort of the leadership of these groups, which I think is really exciting. As you can also see on this screen, um, there's a list of all of our full-time faculty in the middle. Um, myself and Professor Barton are listed there. And then on the uh, third block is our student music jobs. One of the things that, uh, a question that we often get is regarding scholarships here at WPI. And we don't offer the same sort of uh, music scholarships that you may see at a music school. But we do have opportunities for students to uh, receive financial aid um, or work as a student worker within the music department. Many of the labs that Professor Barton just spoke about have student workers um, who participate. And there's also uh, many opportunities both within the ensembles and some of the courses to do the same. For example, for me and with the choirs, uh, we have student accompanists, so people who play the piano. Um, it's a paid position through the department and there are many other federally funded um, student roles through um, financial aid for students to work with different groups and ensembles helping to manage their library or set up chairs or do different things like this. So even though we don't offer scholarships in the traditional sense, um, we're still able to provide some financial aid, which we appreciate. Great. As we navigate away from the website, I'll just say in closing before taking your questions that um, we are all passionate, as I said before, about helping foster your love and knowledge and experience in music. And so um, there are many cases where a student wants to do something in particular um, and maybe that course or you know project doesn't exist, but that doesn't mean that uh, it's still not possible to study. And for example, uh, I have a student who is interested in making a way to translate visual images into sound for people who are visually impaired. And so we set up an IQP, an interactive qualifying project, where we, uh, for next year, and there are going to be four students working on this project um, for developing this kind of this kind of system, right? So, uh, if you can dream it, uh, we will try to make it possible in a lot of in a lot of different ways. And so, what's established is is rich and diverse, but um, there's even more possibilities beyond that. So, we're really excited uh, to have to have more of you involved. Um, uh, I should say performance and getting our work out into the world is incredibly important. Um, and that means, you know, either from a, a virtual presence, we actually have been working on uh, new ways of, of featuring the, the uh, virtual performances of our musical robots. Um, but we also perform as human musicians and we have a big one coming up. I'll put a quick plug in for our ensembles. Uh, Joshua, do you want to say a quick word about that? Absolutely. So. Uh, this coming Sunday, we are having a musical extravaganza downtown in Worcester at Mechanics Hall, which is a historic hall in New England, one of the best concert halls, I think, in the country. It's where Yo-Yo Ma records almost all of his music. And we are taking 11 different ensembles from uh, WPI down to the concert hall, and we're giving four back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back concerts. Um, so you'll hear jazz, choirs, concert bands, new music, old favorites. Uh, the principal violinist from the Dallas Symphony is coming up to solo with the orchestra. 
but we've commissioned some new pieces. So you'll hear some music that's never been performed before that relates to science and some of the topics that people are studying in their labs and other coursework and taking those topics and presenting it in a musical way. The concert's free and Julie, not to put you on the spot, um, but we'd be happy to share some promotional information. Um, maybe we could send out uh, either the program or a link to learn more about this concert uh, to those who are on the session afterwards. Yeah, for sure. We can always get that out for you. Great. Well, Great. thank you both. I, um, I again want to encourage um, our participants to ask whatever questions you need um, to know about music at WPI in the questions and answers. Um, I have my first question for you both, which is kind of, what was your path to WPI? How did um, two musicians kind of end up at this STEM focused institution? Um, so can you tell me about that? Sure. Um, no, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Joshua, go ahead. Sure. I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, so I actually have an engineering background. Um, when I was uh, as an, studying as an undergrad, I pursued both music and engineering. Uh, and when I got to the end of my undergraduate career, I ended up going fully towards music. But one of the things that drew me to WPI was this institution that does both things so well. And for me, as a person, um, I loved engineering and music. And I still love them both to this day. And I think not having to choose between the two, um, especially when I was you know, an undergraduate student, I think was really important. Um, helped me learn a lot about the world in general. So that's a little bit of my background, but I love talking, you know, physics and statics and, you know, chemical engineering with students just as much as I love talking about Beethoven or, you know, Chinese opera or something like that. So. Yeah. And I'll say for me, um, technology has been a part of my music music making practice since I was young. I worked in recording studios as a, you know, as a teenager when I was, uh, I grew up in New York and, um, you know, started writing music you know, using computers in college. And then uh, I started building robots um, during my PhD program. And my, my PhD was in composition and computer technology. So it put technology and, and music together. And so, um, so WPI was really a, a natural fit for me in a lot of different ways. Yeah. yeah, okay, I get it on um, both counts now. Yeah. That's great. Um, so there are some questions in the q and A. I'll just jump in with the first one. Um, we do see a lot of students who play piano um, throughout their lives and at the high school level. So the question says, what can a classical pianist do at WPI if not majoring or minoring in music? Are there pianists in the orchestra, concert band, etc.? So yes, we have a lot of here at WPI, and I think there's a variety of opportunities. Um, so they're often performing in ensembles, like you see the orchestra and the concert band. Um, we also see a lot of our pianists play in the smaller chamber groups. Um, so right now there's a string uh, quintet, so it's piano, two violins, viola, and cello, who are doing a bunch of work this year. And we see students pursuing piano that way. We also have private lessons um, in a wide range of instruments, but including piano. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, with the choirs, uh, I have many students who work as accompanists with the choirs. So they obviously work with us in the rehearsals, um, but then perform during the concerts as well. And I would also say there's other opportunities within um, some of the other courses to explore that. For example, I teach a course called Producer's Composer, uh, where students will make an EP of their own music. So if someone wanted to make an EP of of you know of them of compositions or or arrangements focused on piano that could be a part of it likewise so you know i think rather than you know not just thinking about the traditional sort of performance um there's all sorts of ways to to keep your fingers active and get your get your voice heard very much so great um, and the next question is um, about what kind of opportunities there are for beginner musicians at WPI. Great. I'll just start off to say that certainly in our curriculum, um, 
we have courses about you know introduction to music and and fundamentals which uh take you know take care of the um the sort of the theoretical basis um there are and then uh, Josh, are we going to talk about some of the from the instrumental instruction side of things? Absolutely. So, uh, for beginning musicians uh, in our ensembles, we have many students who have uh, limited experience that enter our ensembles, but just love to play. And one of the things that I think we do really well is finding music that can uh, be appealing and challenging for all ranges. For example, in my choirs, I have many people who show up on the first day and say, "Hey." I barely know how to read music, but this sounds like a lot of fun. I've got two friends who said I have to join. You know, can I just try it out? And we work on it together. And by the end, you know, they're singing some incredibly hard stuff. You know, so there's a lot of a uh, lot of opportunities, and I think we work with everybody, no matter the level. Great. Um, and. The next question is about renting instruments. Um, do students bring their own or is it possible to rent? So uh, it all depends on what kind of instrument uh, you're talking about. Uh, most students bring their own, I would say, but particularly in the uh, for wind and brass players, as they're playing maybe something that's more unique or it's larger, um, we have a number of instruments, you know, certain type of reeds, or bases and different things like this that students can use. And they're uh, not rented, but just borrowed to the students. So it's no cost at that. So Diego, if you wanted to send another note, uh, I could probably answer this a specific. Uh, upright base. Upright yeah. base, yes. So we have some upright bases. Great. So <laughs> that's just something that we'd want to talk about, yeah when you arrive and make sure we can get you on and make sure that they're not already being loaned out. Perfect. Not easy to store in your dorm room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And we have, we have storage for all of our instruments in uh, the music building, which is called Alden Hall. So there's locked spaces only accessible for those students who have instruments stored there. So you don't need to store your trombone underneath your bed but if you wanted to, but you don't have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, dorm room space is always at a premium. Um, yeah. <laughs> in terms of the music lessons, is there an extra cost or are they included in the tuition? So there is a cost for uh, private music lessons. Um, so you can take lessons both for credit and for not for credit, um, but cost the same. So it's either a $65 per hour fee or 35 per half hour. So, and that's a set fee for all of our instructors here on campus. Okay, great. Um, so I am not seeing any more questions in the Q&A, but I'm gonna give our attendees a minute to see if they wanna formulate any. And in the meantime, I'm gonna ask if you can just share with me some of your favorite like annual music events that happen at WPI. Sure, Scott, you wanna go ahead? Um, sure. Yeah. Well, it's been it's a funny question since the the world's looked a little different than you know the last couple of years. But now that we're returning to things that are more normal, I, th I think we're hoping to return to some of our some of our events. So um, some of my particular favorite is we will often bring in guest ensembles, um, and they will come in to do they'll do a master class or they'll do a, a class visit, um, and then have a concert. And so. Uh, and one of my favorite parts of that is that students get to um, they get to interact with these performers in different kinds of contexts. They get to have conversations, learn how they approach uh, music making about uh, their instruments or composition, um, and then they get to see them in concert and they come to it with a completely different perspective. Um, and so, so those opportunities are great. Uh, we've started um, concerts of new music, um, including electronic music. And so um, that's been exciting to, to, uh, to introduce students to some, uh, some music they haven't heard before or that um, um, that that uh, that are maybe new and, and challenging um, and then I'll say personally um, 
at the conclusion of my classes, which are usually concerts, there's a compositional part. So both in musical robotics and a producer's composer, which producers and composers happening right now, we're gonna have a listening party in two weeks where everyone plays their EPs. Um, and so that is the that is one of my most fun uh, times of the year when you get to see what they, they've come away with this, this completed thing, which they, they've made. For me, I'd say the most memorable or uh, impactful moments uh, are the ones where we give performances or elements of class where we in use music to engage with other topics, um, which can vary all over the map. As I mentioned, um, the treble voice choir is just uh, singing two new pieces of music uh, for uh, written by female composers that address STEM and science based topics through the lens of music, which I think is really poignant. You know, here's these students who are, you know, talking about things that they see in other elements of their life. We also have a faculty member uh, coming up who's going to give uh, a performance where the music is based around climate change. And so you're addressing some maybe non musical issues or interests through the lens of music. And I think it's really uh, powerful um, and impactful and it really makes uh, a lasting impact not only in students, but the faculty, the families, the audience. So those are some of the uh, most notable things for me. But some of the funnest things, I love just going to see the variety of activities on campus. And I love, you know, walking into, you know, another class or another performance and seeing a student that maybe I knew in a theory class and seeing them, you know, play a trumpet solo at a jazz concert and saying, whoa, you know, I had no idea that you did this, mm -hmm. you know, or walking down to see the musical theater show and seeing somebody that, you know, maybe sings bass in one of the choirs now is doing, you know, this like big role in the production on campus. And I think that demonstrates just sort of the variety of talent that our students have, um, but also the opportunities, which I think is really cool. So nobody is just, you know, pigeonholed to do computer science and that's it. No, there's a lot more going on, which I enjoy. So. Thank you. Um, it's always interesting for me to hear too, because I see it through the lens of the students that I interact with, but it's nice to get the bigger picture. So um, I don't see any um, last open questions. Um, so are there any closing thoughts, pieces of advice, encouragement you want to give to our audience? Um, I would be a bad host if I didn't at least put in the chat the link um, for students to enroll. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there and um, let me know if you guys have any closing thoughts. My, I'll say and then Scott, I'll let you wrap it up because you always do a good job at that. But I always encourage people um, just to feel free to reach out at any time. Um, our faculty are really good at responding, answering questions. And I know especially for incoming students, there's a lot to take in. Um, and sometimes, you know, the details can get lost or you just have questions. Feel free to reach out. We're helpful. Uh, we want to talk to you and no question is you know, not worth our time to respond. So feel free to reach out. Great. Yeah, and I'll and I'll close with how I started, which is to say that uh, we are all we have devoted our lives to um, to helping people make music a part of theirs, and so um, so we're really excited to to help you in that journey, um, whatever form that takes. Um, and I think WPI is an amazing place. Like I said, you don't you don't need to choose choose between the two. Um, you can become a computer scientist and you know still play the piano. Um, that there's it's not it's not either or, and um, and that you have a group of people. And I and I very honestly uh, can say that our our, that our music faculty are a fantastic, accomplished, um, and really um, nurturing group of people, and they're they're all dedicated to to you know make the most of your musical journey. So we hope you join us. All right, that was perfect. Very high note to end on. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you to our attendees for joining to learn more about music opportunities at WPI. 
We hope to see you all this August and keep in touch with us if there's any questions. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Take folks. Care. Take care.